What's up guys, this is Vanalik Puma, back with another Borderlands 2 build video, and it's about time we got to Krieg. Now, unlike some of my other build videos, this video will go over two builds for Krieg, with one of them being more melee focused, while the other is more elemental or hellborn focused. And of course, like some of my other build videos, we will be going over Krieg's skill tree fairly in depth, and I'll be providing gear recommendations for both builds. So whether you want to smack your foes with the buzz axe or incinerate them with your aura, you should be pretty well covered by what I'm about to go over here. Also, definitely be sure to smash like on this video if you think Krieg is the best, and failing that, you should still smash like because he has some pretty great dialogue. With our intro out of the way, we've got a lot to go over here, so let's go ahead and get started talking about Krieg's skill tree. Like other characters, Krieg has three different subtrees. For the green subtree, we have Bloodlust, which is based around a Bloodlust stack mechanic that provides better buffs based on how many stacks you have. There's the blue subtree called Mania, which is generally more melee focused with some assorted special abilities. And then there's the red Hellborn subtree, which is fire based and contains mechanics revolving around being on fire. For now, we'll just focus on the skills from the Bloodlust subtree, and then we'll progressively work our way to the other subtrees. For Tier 1, we have Blood-Filled Guns and Blood Twitch. The former provides a mag size boost based on your number of Bloodlust stacks, while Blood Twitch improves weapon swap speed based on the number of Bloodlust stacks that you currently have. Of the two, having better mag size is preferable, though Hellborn style builds will get some use out of Blood Twitch since they are going to be using guns. So both of these skills are good, though Blood Filled Guns in my opinion is a little bit better. Moving on to Tier 2, we have three skills which are Taste of Blood, Bloody Revival, and Blood Overdrive. Taste of Blood provides damage reduction while using your action skill, which is perfect for melee builds, while Blood Overdrive provides improved melee damage and reduces grenade fuse time, provided you kill an enemy with a bullet-type attack. Blood Overdrive's bonuses can be nice for a melee build, though it is kind of hard to take advantage of since you're usually defeating enemies with melee and not bullets, while Taste of Blood is arguably essential for melee since you will be using Buzz X Rampage most of the time. As for Bloody Revival, you get some improved assault rifle damage while in Fight for Your Life, which is honestly kind of weak and I'd simply recommend you just skip putting points here altogether. So for Tier 2, maybe pick up Taste of Blood and Blood Overdrive for melee, but if you're a Hellborn user, you could skip this tier entirely. This brings us to Tier 3, where we have another three skills, which are Bloodbath, Buzz X Bombardier, and Fuel the Blood. Of the three, Bloodbath might just be the best skill here due to how it improves weapon damage based on the number of stacks you have, so long as you kill an enemy with a grenade or an explosion. This ends up having much better synergy with many weapons and skills while Fuel the Blood provides some grenade damage bonus when you kill an enemy with a melee attack. Now, while Fuel the Blood may appear to be more useful for melee users, it supposedly can make the penalty from Silence the Voices in the Mania subtree worse, so it's something melee players usually avoid in their builds. That leaves Buzz Axe Bombardier, which is great for melee builds, as you can throw explosive Buzz Axes, but for Gun and Hellborn users, you're really better off putting this point elsewhere. So, regardless of build, I would go with Bloodbath, and if you're doing melee, be sure to also pick up Buzz Axe Bombardier. And now we arrive at our final skills within this subtree, which consist of Tier 4's Blood Trance and Boiling Blood, Tier 5's Nervous Blood, and the capstone, which is Blood Splosion. Now, since Blood Trance only works with Buzz X Rampage, it's mainly beneficial to melee players while Boiling Blood is a little more general, as it can improve your stack hold time before Bloodlust stacks start to decay. Nervous Blood, on the other hand, primarily favors gun builds, as it's a kill skill that improves your reload speed based on your stack count, so if you're going for more of a gun build, you're probably going to want Nervous Blood. As for Blood Splosion, this might just be Krieg's best skill, as it causes explosions that match the element of the damage used to kill an enemy. However, on top of that, any overkill or excess damage used to defeat the enemy also factors in, 
allowing for this sort of snowballing effect where you can deal insane damage, provided you can chain it of blood explosions together. So, at the very least, it is a skill that's worth picking up if you have the skill points to spare. Overall, and as a general piece of advice if you're specking into this tree, try to avoid the Buzz Axe Rampage skills if you're not using Krieg's Action skill, and avoid more gun-based skills if you're doing more of a melee build. But with Bloodlust out of the way, it's about time we talked about our blue subtree, which is the Mania subtree. For Tier 1, we have three skills, which are Empty the Rage, Pull the Pin, and Feed the Meat. Of these three, Pull the Pin is kind of useless since you won't be able to gain XP at max level. As for Empty the Rage, it provides melee damage bonus and provides an additional bonus when your shield is down, while Feed the Meat improves your max health and increases your shield recharge delay. Both of these are great skills depending on what type of build you're going for. Just remember that that third skill, Pull the Pin, is something that you're going to want to avoid. Continuing to Tier 2, we have Embrace the Pain and Fuel the Rampage. Feel the Rampage can be nice if you're playing solo as any damage you take can be used to reduce the cooldown for Buzz X Rampage. However, it allows one-way friendly fire, so that can be a problem if you're playing co-op. As for Embrace the Pain, it improves fire rate when your shields are down and can also increase your shield recharge delay, which is really good with certain shields. Of the two, I think Embrace the Pain is the more useful skill, however Fuel the Rampage might be useful for solo play. So, you can spec for both of these if you want, though I would probably lean more towards Embrace the Pain. This brings us to Tier 3, where we have some great and some bad skills here. Strip the Flesh in particular is great since it boosts explosive damage, which will make any Torg weapon or explosive type damage source stronger. There's also Thrill of the Kill, which can be nice for gun builds since it allows you to recover health upon defeating enemies without your action skill, so I would recommend that skill as well. But as for our undisputedly bad skill, which is Light Diffuse, this skill is mainly just bad because it becomes obsolete in the higher level difficulties. The explosive damage just doesn't scale well, and while the Fight for Your Life override is pretty neat and fun to play with at lower levels, this is really just something you should skip at higher levels. So for Tier 3, just avoid this one and maybe pick up Strip the Flesh and Thrill of the Kill, depending on your build. And now we have everything in Tier 4 and above. Redeem the Soul is nice for co-op as it allows you to instantly revive teammates at some risk to yourself, while Salt the Wound is highly effective for melee and shotgun users provided they take damage with a depleted shield. Silence the Voices and Release the Beast are essential for melee builds as Silence the Voices boosts your melee damage considerably at the expense of a 12% chance to accidentally damage yourself, while Release the Beast provides some damage reduction, melee damage bonus, and also allows you to instantly re-enter Buzz X Rampage after your current Rampage ends. You just have to make sure that you're below 33% health. Ultimately, Mania is good for melee builds, and it may also be worth it to put a few points here if you're using a shield that benefits from increased shield recharge delay. For Hellborn users, I'd recommend you avoid putting a lot of points here since those points could be better used in our final subtree, which is going to be the Hellborn subtree. Starting with Tier 1, both of these skills are primarily based around self-ignition, which lay the groundwork for a lot of the skills that are further on in this tree. Of the two, Burn Baby Burn is a little bit stronger since it increases the amount of burn damage you can deal to enemies, which is further enhanced provided you are on fire. Fuel the Fire, on the other hand, is a kill skill that increases elemental effect chance, which is nice, but I think you'll prefer the burn damage boost from Burn Baby Burn instead. Ideally, you'll at least want some investment in both of these, but if you just had to pick one, I would go with Burn Baby Burn. As for Tier 2, we have Numbed Nerves and Pain is Power. Numbed Nerves provides damage reduction while you're on fire, which I would say is essential since you're going to be on fire most of the time. Pain is Power, on the other hand, improves weapon and melee damage at the expense of weakened critical hit damage, and of course those bonuses are enhanced provided the player is on fire. So really I would say between both of these skills, they are both great and are worth picking up. And then there's Tier 3, which consists of Elemental Elation, Delusional Damage, and Fire Fiend. 
Delusional Damage might just be the most important skill for Hellborn builds, since it expands your ability to self-ignite, and also seems to improve the compatibility of some of the other skills within the Hellborn subtree itself. After that, you have Elemental Elation, which improves your magazine size and fire rate when you deal status effect damage, while Fire Fiend primarily improves weapon accuracy and reload speed while on fire. Both of these skills together can contribute to your overall DPS, so if you're doing any sort of gun build, it might be a good idea to pick up both. As for our final four skills within the Hellborn subtree, some are better than others. Hellfire Halitosis is the absolute worst and should be avoided, while Flame Flare is nice for improving the duration of burn effects and allowing for potential reignitions. Though, you may find higher investment is unnecessary and potentially detrimental if you can't handle the longer burn duration. Elemental Empathy, on the other hand, is great as it allows you to heal from all elemental effect damage, while Raving Retribution is nice as it allows you to emit fire orbs that home in on enemies and potentially ignite them, which can in turn reignite you and then set up the rest of your Hellborn-based buffs. Raving Retribution's fireballs can also deal a decent amount of damage too, so while it's not quite as powerful as the other capstones that are available, it's still worth it to put at least a point here, in my humble opinion. Overall though, Hellborn is a great subtree for gun users, and if you plan on going that route, I'd recommend you invest in pretty much every skill here if you have the points and are using compatible equipment. Otherwise, and for melee playstyles, I think you're better off putting those points into Mania, where you'll see a lot more benefit. Speaking of melee builds, it's about time we discussed how I might put one together, and to start, we'll talk about the skill tree and then work our way to some gear recommendations. As you can see, we've got the majority of our investment in both the Bloodlust and Mania trees, with a skill point distribution of 42 for Bloodlust, 33 for Mania, and 0 for Hellborn. The idea with this build is that you're primarily going to be using Buzzak's Rampage as a source of your melee damage, which has the benefit of making you not rely on weapons as much. This justifies a lot of the skills we've picked up in Bloodlust. After all, Taste of Blood, Buzzax Bombardier, and Blood Trance are no-brainers, since all of these skills either boost your action skills effects or enhance its capabilities. I've also picked up a number of gun-related skills for when you might want to use guns, which is where the rationale for specking into blood-filled guns, blood twitch, and nervous blood come from. After that, Bloodbath has really good synergy with a number of skills and explosive weapons. Boiling Blood is nice for retaining bloodlust stacks, and Blood Explosion is just a must-have for any Krieg build. The controversial allocation I've made here is around Blood Overdrive. While it's difficult to normally take advantage of the melee damage bonus, it is nice to have for when you get second wins, or while you're using the legendary Reaper Comm. That, and I felt it didn't make sense to put any of the points that went into Blood Overdrive and put them into Hellborn or something. So, I'm going to stick with Blood Overdrive since I can at least use it from time to time. As for Mania, a lot of our investment here is predicated on the idea of boosting our melee damage bonus. In particular, Empty the Rage, Salt the Wound, Silence the Voices, and the Capstone, Release the Beast are very melee oriented and will help improve your overall damage with the Buzz Axe. After that, almost everything else here is supplemental. Skills like Feed the Meat improve your health, Embrace the Pain improves your fire rate with guns, Feel the Rampage can help with cooldown every once in a while during solo play, and Strip the Flesh should go well with Buzzax Bombardier from Bloodlust. With all this said, you could and really should do a potential substitution for Feel the Rampage if you play co-op. If it were me, I'd probably do something more like this, where I'd at least pick up Redeem the Soul and then throw the extra point into Pull the Pin. Admittedly, it's not a great solution since we're not getting any XP gain, but it's a bit better than putting those points into Hellborn or Fuel the Blood, as both don't really play well with Silence the Voices. But of course, feel free to experiment. As far as gear goes for a melee build, your go-to shield is going to be the Rough Rider since the depleted capacity works well with a couple of Krieg skills. Plus, the max health and damage reduction bonuses provided tend to make Krieg surprisingly durable. And if you add on a Blood of the Ancients relic for its additional max health boost, 
This can really make Creek pretty bulky and tanky and is really the bulk of the core equipment that you're going to need. As for class mods, typically the go-to ones for this type of setup are usually either the legendary sickle or the legendary reaper. However, if you want to try something different, I might recommend the crunch class mod due to its ability to really boost explosive damage. It's up to you, but I usually stick with these three while playing melee creek. As for weapons, you can really use anything. Your buzz axe will be the main source of your damage output since you'll be using it to attack more than your actual weapons, but I would recommend you pick up a grog nozzle to heal in between rampages, a bada boom or some other powerful launcher to use if you should go down, and maybe a few explosive weapons like the herald or ravager or just anything else you can think of. If you do that, I think you'll find that you won't really need much else. In the end, I'd say all you really need to make Melee Krieg work is a Rough Rider, a Blood of the Ancients Relic, and the Legendary Sickle or Reaper Com, and you should have yourself a nice melee build that doesn't really require that much else in terms of gear. But as promised at the beginning of this video, I said I would discuss my Hellborn build, and it's about time we got into that right now. Unlike our melee spec, which just went pretty heavy into two subtrees, our Hellborn spec is going to have our skill points be a little more spread out, specking 26 into Bloodlust, 15 into Mania, and then 34 into Hellborn. For Bloodlust, I've mainly gone ahead here and picked up the more gun-based skills like Blood-Filled Guns, Blood Twitch, Blood Bath, and Nervous Blood, while excluding most of the Buzzax Rampage-based skills that we had in the melee build. Like the melee build, though, I did go ahead and get Boiling Blood and Blood Explosion since the latter is really powerful and the former is just a decent skill to have. As for Mania, I'm mostly picking up skills that will benefit our gear. In particular, both Feed the Meat and Embrace the Pain are especially important for this since both increase shield recharge delay, which works great with a certain shield I'll be discussing shortly. As for Thrill of the Kill, I decided to pick it up simply as a workaround for not having access to Buzzax Rampage, as we will lose that ability to restore our health upon scoring a kill. So, specking for Thrill of the Kill essentially replaces that. This of course leaves us with Hellborn, where we've specced for just about everything here. Obviously, I avoided Hellfire Halitosis since the ability to breathe fire isn't really that useful, and I also decided to put only one point in Fuel the Fire and Flame Flare, since both of these skills will see a tremendous boost once we equip our class mod. As for everything else, Burn Baby Burn, Delusional Damage, and Raving Retribution are good for self-igniting and improving elemental status effects. Numb to Nerves is nice for the damage reduction. Pain is Power, Elemental Elation, and Fire Fiend are great for improving your DPS. And Elemental Empathy is nice for providing some passive healing. Of course, it wouldn't be a Hellborn build if we didn't talk about gear. Perhaps the most important piece of gear for this setup is the Flame of the Firehawk Shield, which thanks to our investment in some of Krieg's skills, we can more easily take advantage of the Firehawk's special effects. With this setup, you should be able to continuously emit Novas longer than on other characters, and thanks to our investment in Hellborn, it should get quite a few buffs as well. As for class mods, it really makes the most sense to use the Legendary Torch for this build. After that, the Toast class mod can be pretty good if you want the boost to paint his power. The Legendary Reaper should also work fairly well for a Hellborn build, and you might even be surprised by the Legendary Psycho too. So, as far as comms go, I would recommend any of these four, as they should serve your purposes very, very well. For relics and grenades, I'd recommend a lot of the usual suspects. For a relic, you're definitely going to want a Bone of the Ancients that matches the enemy you're fighting, or you're going to be wanting to use a Fire Bone of the Ancients, simply because all of the damage you're going to be dealing is predominantly fire damage. For a grenade, I'd probably recommend either the Magic Missile or the Stormfront, with the latter being useful if you want to quickly stack Bloodlust. This brings us to weapons, where I think you can use just about any elemental weapon that's available. I usually like Moxie weapons like the Grog Nozzle, Slow Hand, Heartbreaker, or Kitten since they go well with the Flame of the Firehawk, but you can really use any elemental variants of any popular weapons that you can think of. 
That said, it might be worth it to look into some weapons that activate Bloodbath. Some weapons are more consistent than others, but my favorite tends to be the Peak Opener, Kerblaster, Seeker, Bada Boom, and the reload portion of many Tidor weapons like the Babymaker and Omen. In fact, these could be options for both Hellborn Krieg and even Melee Krieg, since both builds are specced into Bloodbath. Ultimately though, Hellborn Krieg can be a lot of fun to play, and once you've got the skill tree set up, a lot of the gear I just recommended should serve that playstyle very well. So be sure to check out a lot of these items when you get the opportunity. Otherwise guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. We went over a bunch of stuff here, and I hope it helped you guys out. If it did, definitely be sure to smash like on this video, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload my next video, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.